Hello guys and welcome back to the Syntho YouTube channel. As you'll see by the title, today we are deconstructing one of the best producers of recent times, that's Sweely and specifically his track, Get The F Out. I won't include the actual word in case it affects the old YouTube algorithm. In this video, I kind of create a little sketch slash um, groove and then I walk you through my thought process in getting to that point. Sweely is no doubt uh, in a league of his own, so I very much uh, am open to admit that I'm nowhere near as good as that guy, but I did my best to show you how I'd go about trying to create this kind of vibe. I think I did do quite a good job, if I do say so myself. If you want to see more videos like this, we have got over 300 now in the Syntho app. This also has a news feed, direct messaging, personal profiles. You can basically connect with people like you around the world and get close to your dream of releasing on your dream labels. But anyway, let's get into today's video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video and what you would have done differently, maybe in certain parts. And in general, just spread some love and enjoy. In today's video, I am making some grooves like the one and only Sweely. I go through the beats, the bass, and just kind of talk about some of the tools he's using and how I would go about making a tune like his. So yeah, without further ado, let's so, get let's get into it. The Sweely track of choice is the Don't Push It Too Far Security. Um, really, really sick tune. Um, I remember when I first heard it, it was uh, around, it was last summer and, oh no, it was a bit longer, probably about a year ago and I hadn't gone out for ages, but nine months I'm saying and I remember putting this on at a party and I was like, wow, I was really obsessed with the groove and I was kind of determined one day I'd make some tunes of a similar fashion and yeah, I just never got around to it. So to be honest, this session was as much as for me as it was for you guys. I know everyone's always quite fascinated with Sweetie's grooves. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and figure it out myself. Um, so let's have a listen to the original. I'm just going to put it from the start. And then we can play mine. I have to say that the track's got to the point where I'm really, really liking what I've done. So I'm going to try and make it my own original. And continue with the track as a solo project. Begin. I've just noticed I'm missing something. So yeah, it's a really, really sick tune, um, and I've got uh, quite a lot of the parts down. I'm going to talk you through it. So, Sweely is a French producer, got to be one of the best producers around, I think. His grooves are insane. Uh, so it's quite a daunting task to do this one, um, but hopefully I can give some uh, justice to him and some justice to myself. Um, and yeah, it uses MPC 1000XL, which is a famous sampler. And by using that MPC, he gets this really, really nice because if I'm correct, the MPC gives a 12-bit reduction. It might be 16-bit, but he gets really nice, warm sound. It means it's downsampled. Um, 
So it basically just gives it some crunch and some warmth. And that's why often when using hardware, you get this really nice analog sound as Sweely is loading the samples into his MPC. And then you record the MPC into your um, DAW, so Ableton, and you get this really nice, organic, warm sound. That's probably the best way to describe it. If you want to learn more about the MPC, Google will have much more precise information than what I'm giving. But the gist of it is he uses hardware, which has a really nice warm sound, which gives it this kind of unpolished vibe to his music, which is quite iconic and part of the vibe. Um, so if you hear straight away, I want to focus on the kick. Boom, boom, boom. And one thing I noticed is all his drum patterns are over four. So when we're creating a MIDI clip, like so, Sweely's not doing just over one bar. If you go to the left and you see the position, length, he's having the, the bars over four. So if we press play on this kick, we'll be able to see how the kick pattern You can hear the kick, how it changes between one, two, three, and four. And this is classic call and response. So the call is on the left and the response on the right, as in the first part of the bar, second bar. Um, and yeah, this is really giving it that groove. And we'll see as we go through the elements that he's doing this in a lot of the elements. Um, and it's giving it this constant call and response groove back and forth, keeps it interesting, keeps it bouncy. And yeah, it's definitely something he's doing in all of his elements, including the synths. So the kick pattern I have got down, so it goes like this. So we can solo mine. And you can see at the end, we've got even more kicks. And the choice of sample, I've gone for this 909 from the SIM pack, which everyone can access. It's a free pack. And then I've just put it in mono. And here's the interesting bit. So if we listen to his kick again, it's almost a bit flabby. That's how I explain the kick. It's hard to explain how does a kick drum sound, but it's not too polished and too bright. Um, mine's probably a bit more punchy than his. So what I've done is I've moved the attack across to the right. So you see the start point here. If you move that. And I've been finding if you can get rid of that click at the start of the kick drum, it can give you grooves a bit more of a unpolished sound and less HD. Obviously if you want to these big room tech house bombs, this probably isn't a video anyway to, to help you do that. But if you want to kind of make these more understated, slicker, dusty grooves, then it's something you can try. And I've been doing it a lot recently. It's moving the start point on the kick a bit further in. Because you see the click there? I just want to get rid of that click, and I really like this, this vibe. So then what I've got with the EQ, I'm taking off some top end. But now I listen, I want to bring some top end back. Just a bit of soul. Subtleness. And then I've got bit reduction on, redux. Just a tiny bit. And then transient shaper. I don't even want that on, so I'll just delete that. So that's the kick. Um, and the kick, yeah, it's sounding nice. So here I would just say, guys, if you want to go for these breaky vibes, you probably want your call and response to be over four. And it keeps interesting then because just that, that alone is going to keep changing and keep your foot tapping without knowing. And yeah, having uh, interesting kick patterns can help a lot. So next, I want to move on to the snare. It's quite bright in here. It's kind of like a clappy snare. I couldn't quite define it. And before we actually look at the snare, I want to talk about breaks and sampling breaks. 
if you don't already know now, um, with the MPC, you often sample sounds. So you might get a record, record like an old jazz record, an old funk record or a rap record, whatever, and sample hits. You might sample a little drum loop, sample a pad, sample a lead. Then you can use it inside the MPC. And I suspect Sweetie will be sampling a lot of breaks, not necessarily uh, getting the breaks himself from vinyl. He might just be downloading packs. I think he's very good at sampling, actually. And sampling takes time. There's no quick fix to it. To find the six samples, you've got to spend time looking. Otherwise, we'd all have to sound the same. Um, but let me just show you an example of some breaks. So these are some breaks I've collected over the time. And you can hear the tonality of them. They're quite dusty. And, and what you could do is you could load a mini track and then look and then drag one of these breaks into here and then drag the start marker and use different parts of the break. And this is often what people do in NPCs and then trick them themselves, but you can do it inside the box as well. You can even slice the whole thing to a MIDI track by right clicking, slice to new MIDI track. And then I think you can actually get the whole thing, every drum hit. So where are we there? Has it gone to the end? I think we're right at the end. See here, ah, it didn't work, but you can essentially get the whole thing to slice separately. But you can do it manually, manually as well. Um, so yeah, I suspect a lot of the drum sounds we uses are always sampled from breaks, whether he gets himself a vinyl or he just downloads like packs, I'm not sure. So that snare he's got on the offbeat, it's kind of clappy snare it's kind of weird. I've gone for this. It's not that similar to his, but it's got the kind of dullness again that he's got. Uh, but with a weird kind of analoginess about it. Let me just mute all these channels. And we can go through one by one. What was this? Sub bass. So. It's just got that kind of. It's got more release on it. I like that. And I just dragged loads of different breaks in here. So that one's quite nice, that snare there. But yeah, the one we've got is kind of nice. And again, I've rolled some top end off. Just gives it a kind of dullness by rolling some of this. But not too much, a tiny bit. And I've also used the bit reduction again. Just a subtle amount, put it on 16. It's probably not doing much really. But if you listen to this with the kick and the clap. And then what I wanted to do was layer a break because I think a lot of the time in these tracks, it can be quite hard to reference because, well, Sweelys, because there's kind of a lot of little noises and just this overall groove. And I think a lot of the time helping get there can be using a break. So I've just sampled this. So what I did was I dragged the break in. Let me show you which one it was. It was this one. So listen to it on its own. So you drag it in. But then what we can do is a tip for using loops and breaks. If you double click inside and you go to where it says transient, click that. Actually click below it where them arrows are. 
Then we click that and you click this, the forward button. You can then move the number and it makes the loop tight. This can work with bongo loops, breakbeat loops, anything, vocals. You can get creative with this. There is definitely no limit. So I've done that with this one above. I've done it at 46. So and I've got a nice little groove going now. And next I want to talk about the hi-hats. I've listened to a few Sweetly tracks and I notice he's often using these 16th hats, 808s a lot of the time. And if you can listen to this, just going all the way through, but it has a little, if you listen to this first little, at the end of the bar, listen, it has a little break, then goes again. So listen to this, I'll show you the MIDI. So it runs all the way through, so let's listen again. But then it runs all the way through, so again, He's got it changing over four. Because there's no gap there. There is a gap here. And then on the hats, I've used a bit of bit reduction. A bit of grit, then overdrive to give it some distortion. I think that sounded pretty nice. The next is these congas, kind of weird congery noises that I was really trying to decipher for quite a while, and I think I did something cool in the end. So what I did was these ones, yeah. Got some kind of like dull, kind of no top endy, because a lot of his sounds are not not that bright. So it's kind of important to not get too fresh sounds that have got too much high end in. I've got a phase mistress on here. It's giving it a bit of wobble. Maybe a bit of a, trying a bit stereo could be cool. I think that's cool. He's got kind of these weird sounds in there similar to this, but it really doesn't matter getting the exact ones I'm just showing you kind of what he's done. If I show you the pattern, it was just two sounds used in the end. It's almost like it doesn't kind of make that much sense, but if you've got it in the mix, it's almost one of them where you've just got to just draw it in and just use your ears. And this next thing I noticed was this clav that goes like Listen. So I'll put mine on. This. This is kind of really quiet, so I'm going to draw some top end off. this again oh yeah that was just another random break but yeah that clap is just in there grooving not doing much just grooving so yeah that clap is in 
And then next thing I want to show you is this kind of is a tutorial on YouTube by oh something noise. I'm going to attach it to this video. It's a really cool little tutorial. Basically, Sweely did a video of how he creates comes from his percussion, and this and it was in French. And this guy muted distilled noise. That's it. And he did a really cool 10 minute video of how to do it. And I remember today and I thought I'd check it out and I've done my own kind of version of it. And essentially what you do is you create a, you can use a loop um, and then you use an operator or any instrument and you can use an arpeggiator to create these vibes. So if you listen to this, you then use a vocoder on a another channel and link it to the Omnisphere. But I'm going to attach this video to this because he explains it really well. So if you want to watch that, feel free to pause the video now and I'll attach that and you can watch that while, yeah, while it just saves me going through it again. And to be honest, it explains it really well. So there's no need for me to do it again. But yeah, you can essentially trigger uh, any sounds. And then, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. It gives this kind of weird modulated kind of LFO-y arpeggiated groove. Because he's doing it with a operator and a sine wave. But I went into Omnisphere and started messing around with some of the sounds. And I realized if you're using some kind of like percussive sound to trigger it, it can sound sick. So yeah, this will make sense once you've watched that video. And it's going to be attached below. So yeah, this is what I've got going for this kind of weird... Weird modula modulator groove. I think I've really got a nice percussive vibe for this track now. And then I've also got this kind of breaky thing. I'm saying kind of thingy, basic -y a lot this video. It's all kind of just sounds that are just don't really fit anything. They're just mad noises. But it's the best way to explain it, I think. And I would advise everyone just getting pretty wacky and wild if this is the kind of thing you're after. Because there's uh, no set way to do it. And I've been fascinated by Swedish groove some time, so it's, it's kind of good that I'm finding that tip with this video. I think it's pretty, pretty good. So he's got a lot of vocal. I'm gonna just, I've got this kind of two vocal thing here. Hype up the motherfucking beat. Hype up the motherfucking beat. So I'm just gonna put this in here just so. Hype up the motherfucking beat. It's the same as what he's done. I've just loaded a sample into audio. If people ask me how to find vocals, there is no um, secret. It's just a matter of going on to YouTube, going on to a cappella sites, getting creative. I've still not got a set way to do it. I just find bits and pieces like my hard drive and just fucking YouTube and all that jazz. Um, it's never that systemized or exact. I just find bits and bobs everywhere. And I think that's what everyone does. Sampling takes time, finding cool samples. My tip would be sit on the sofa on YouTube on a Saturday night or Tuesday night or whenever and collect your samples before your studio sessions. I think it's much easier. I think it can be kind of pressure on yourself trying to find samples while you're actually in your studio session. I always try and do it before. So yeah, luckily I got quite lucky with these two. I'm not going to lie to you, but... Yeah, usually I'll find them before, so. Hype up the motherfucking beat. Maybe I'll pitch this down a bit. Hype up the motherfucking beat. Hype up the motherfucking beat. Yeah, so that's kind of acting like his security thing. Security. 
fuck the motherfucking beat. It's not exactly the same, but it's the same kind of uh, vibe to the track. So the next thing we can look at is, I think we can look at the next eight bars. And he cuts everything out at the end there. So he gets that long note at the start, can you hear it? Just one note. So I only noticed this as this track started to play. So I'm gonna go for an A. trillion I don't want to spend too long preset flicking with this and I find the right sound I'm just going to try a Moog or something and, and type model mini Moog this will do for, for the example I think that's kind of it's not quite got that sharp attack bit of release on it as well hype up the motherfucking beat Okay, now begin. It's got a bit more of a pluck in that, so put the resonance up maybe. Hype up the mother. So this next section, let's have a look. Got that bass, really nice. So the bass line. Here we go. So listen to the bass line, it's with his track. It's really, really simple actually. He's just going. I think it actually was down here, you know. Should be down here. So it's the scale he's working in is A flat minor, and it's just a, literally the same note going to din 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 din, then comes up. And I spoke to someone about this recently, a member of Synth actually, and they said they were overcomplicating their bass lines, and. Sometimes the naughtiest bass lines are just like the three notes, like this. Crazy. Hype up the motherfucking beat. And the sound could probably be close to his. But I just use Trillion. Probably will use my hardware for when I try and finish this track. If I do finish this track, change some audios. But the key to getting this bass line, like that kind of bouncing difference is bouncing difference. You know, so then each note sounds kind of different. It's changing the velocities on each note. So, because let me show you, if I select all these notes now, Command A, and turn them all up, watch this. It's all the same, but if you bring the velocity down, get this difference in 
Lost Season. It gives it a different kind of feel. And you could get really detailed with this, but if I'm honest, I just, I just um, did it random. Because we could even bring this one down, like... Yeah, and his sound is a bit more squelchy, acidy. Um, he's no doubt using hardware for that. But it's just a matter of going through sounds. Um, this one's really nice. And then we could use an auto filter on top. And use the LFO. Create even more movement. So by using velocity on the bass notes changing, plus your auto filter, you can create some really, really cool sort of movement. That sounds really good if you ask me. And I realized I forgot to show you this other sound. Listen at the end of the bar. This kind of rezo riser. And these are sounds that I've been really trying to get in my own productions and I always kind of neglect them. Um, I'm going to play it from here. And what I've done is I've just, I've done a little melody. I think he's got something different, but let me show you. And I think the thing here is just having melody at the end of the four bars. So if we listen with the bass and the kick, it goes. And it gives that real funky groove at the end of the bar, you know? I think it's something that's quite easy to neglect and just not have these kind of things, but it makes the groove so much more interesting. With a bit of delay on it as well. Because let me show you sweet these. bit more sat back in the mix and this one actually sounds better you see that just at the end of the bar it's so sick um i'm really happy because that melody actually isn't the same as his so it's gonna be nice because i'm gonna probably continue this track on but not use the same bass line because it's the exact same melody as his um but yeah, I'm really, really happy with that little quirky lead. So, uh, what's this again? Nothing, we can delete that. I actually think it was a cool sound. That was a cool sound. Let's leave that in. Oh, I know what's next, it's gonna be cool. So it's the sound which really bemused me for a while. And I think I did it. So these sounds are really cool, um, that lead. It reminds me of kind of G-Funk, Dr. Dre, and they all did it on a Moog. And the only reason I know this is because I think it was the one of those films. It's Maybe it was the two-pack one or something, or not the two-pack one. But you know those films, it's about the rappers. Or did it, there was one on NWA, I'm sure there was. Someone will know. Um, anyway, I saw they had a Moog, and they were playing the melodies on that. And I was like, shit, so that's what they're using. 
and it's just a sawtooth. So I think in operator, if we loaded an operator into here and we put a sawtooth on here, I mean, you can hear it. So yeah, it sounded cool. So the best thing to use would either be a Moog emulation. So if anyone's got Artoria, there is the Mini V emulation, which has a cool saw sound. If I show you, uh, but it's well, something missing in it. So I didn't end up using it. But yeah, if you just type in saw, that's the um, mini V sound. Hopefully it's not going to freeze. Um, but yeah, these kind of sounds are just bold and just, just cool as fuck. And I couldn't really encourage anyone enough to try this kind of shit out. Because um, I would never have thought to use just a saw sound in, in one of my tracks. Because it's kind of just outrageous and bold. Um, but it sounds so sick. And it's that funk. And I've always had a kind of a bit of a fascination and attraction to that that G house vibe, G funk. Hmm. This is why I don't use the Mini V as well because it always freezes my computer. And I didn't save it for a fucking while. Oh shit! Thank God that's through. That's some froze. Let me save it as well. So what I did was, in the end, I went for Omnisphere because Omnisphere's got a whole bunch of cool saw sounds. So I'm going to show you how I did it in Omnisphere. So if you're new to Omnisphere or you've not got Omnisphere, I'd recommend getting it because it's got fucking everything. And what you can do is you can go to, so you go to A or B, you can go wherever, main, and you can go click here. So I go to A and click inside here. And you see that it says oh, category type, source, timbre, tombra. Um, and you can find Moog by going... Actually, you know what? I just searched it, I think, at the top. Oh, but if you go to source, you can scroll down and go to Mini Moog. This is the fucking the hack for Omnisphere because it's got all the sounds of all the sick machines inside here. So there's actually some fucking sick ones, like Korg Monopoly, all sorts. And I've not even touched the surface of this. I hope I'm. So yeah, Omnisphere crew, get, in, get on this. Just go and load your own samples into air. From here, just load samples. They sound amazing. So I'll show you the source sound that I got. And this is the melody. I figured out the melody. I think I was close. I didn't get quite the end of the bar, but I did decent. Hopefully you lot are nodding your heads and smiling because I'm pretty proud of that attempt. So let's have a look how simple the melody is. So he starts off on the root note because we're working in A flat minor. And we could all write this melody. We all could have wrote this melody. But when it's in the whole track, it kind of sounds like it's fucking just out of this world. But when you break it down, and what I did was the sound, I loaded it into Omnisphere, and I think I just rolled some top end off with a filter. It just kind of gave it a bit more rawness. I could maybe even downsample it with Redux. Listen to these synths now. We've got a really, 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 really nice groove. He 
just got a nicer roll on his and I think that's to do with the mod wheel but I couldn't figure out how to do it inside Omnisphere so yeah it's just a matter of fiddling around with the note lengths things like that but as a kind of sketch I think it sounds pretty sick but I'm not going to copy that melody because it's too too similar but yeah it's, it was just so you can get the idea of what sound he's using uh, and the melody is really simple <laughs> Then if we get the vocal in now, because his track kind of has this. The security thing going on. We could get a little crash in there. Symbol. That'll do. And I wanted to really, when you're doing these references or taking inspiration, you don't have to get caught up on getting the sound exactly right. See, that's so nice, that symbol he's got. Maybe we'll change it afterwards, but to begin with, you just get the groove in. Pinch it up a few. That'd be an 808 symbol, that. Here it is. And then he has that little vocal. So what we could do is, we could take this vocal sample that we've got in. Hype up the motherfucking beat. Could do the bip, 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 bip. So drag this into a MIDI clip. Uh, drag this into here. And then we're going to go to the beat bits. We liked that. We could make our own little groove up. How does this go again? I think it's to the left. I think it's even shorter. See, that's pretty cool. Then we could put some weird delay on it, so. Duplicate loop, we can maybe take it out this second, so. Better delay works wonders. And now we're going to turn the call and response on with this vocal. So I've got two in here. The second one is fucking sick. It really adds a lot of groove. Swilly's often using a lot of kind of effects in his tracks. So it's just a matter of collecting sounds again, like almost almost like telephone rings and even like that, group to a drum rack. Fortunately, I've got a lot of sounds. Let's not use that. Some of these ring mods are cool. And he creates kind of a story within his music. I think that's the... I could put this over four. 
Four again, yeah, because that's the thing he's doing here. Okay, maybe got this. Maybe the ring could come before that last bit of vocal. And even some random snares. Could even just have that. That's nice. Fucking hell, I'm feeling this one. So guys, um, that is all the parts I've got. I'm actually going to do a part two of this video because I'm going to turn this fit track into my own and get rid of some of the elements that are on the Sweely tip. But if I can give you a overview of how to get your tunes to sound like Sweely, don't overdo it because he doesn't use that many elements, I don't think. He just makes it really groovy. So don't be putting a thousand drum tracks in there because it's not what you need to do. I would definitely be sampling breaks, um, getting cool kind of perky sounds. I'm going to attach that tutorial onto this video of the distilled noise as it's a really wicked one. Um, and yeah, just go for these kind of cool sounds. Yeah. And the melodies aren't that complicated, even though they kind of sound like they are. I think, um, yeah, I think when you try and break them down, it's not too bad. So hopefully that's helped a few of you guys. And peace out. Part two will be coming soon where it'll be my own track because I'm going to take out the saw. I'm going to redo the bass. I think I'm going to go with these elements. I like this. Not that lead though. I like the lead, but it's just too similar. That's what I like. That's so we're going to work from there for mine. So thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you very soon. So thank you very much for watching that. I hope you found it fun. Don't forget to check out the Syntho app. There is a £10 trial. Please like, comment, subscribe on the old YouTube. I've also got a personal YouTube. If you just search Josh Baker, we've also got a podcast and all that jazz. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy.